been doing, used to do, before we took a break for a couple of weeks. Some of us went uh, to the Bahamas and some of us got busy. I just, just saying, uh-huh. um, we used to do this top five of, in five, where we take five minutes and talk about top five movies in a certain genre. And of course, in tribute to District 9, we thought, what better than to do our top five sci-fi movies? And I, I thought we could do either top five alien or top five time travel, because all this kind of, anything that involves space and, and that fits in the genre, but I thought we'd just mm-hmm. do the whole spectrum. Might as well. Open it up. It'd be a lot easier than having ones where it's just one specific actor and what roles he's played. Absolutely. This is so much easier to do. Yeah. Right. So who's number five on your list? Number five is Back to the Future, part two. Part two. Don't give me that look. The reason I I'm like just... it so much is because there are hoverboards in it. Michael J. Fox is really funny in this, and also the DeLorean. you got to love it. So why not the first one, then? Because something about the missing piece, which was the hoverboards and the whole future. I like how they finally did one where it's actually about the future future right. in 2010. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave it there because I'm hoping you're going to redeem yourself and have the first one closer to the top. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll give you that. This, this okay. is your top five. I know. Yeah. Don't judge for the first one. So I what's, your, what's your number five? Uh, Independence Day is my number five, so feel free to rag on that. But I liked Independence Day because even though it was a, this cheesy alien movie, uh, I love the chemistry between Will Smith mm-hmm. and um, Tall Guy, whose name I can't ever remember. Um, Mark, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. I said Mark Yeah, Goldblum. and just their, their whole chemistry there. Plus, it was the first alien movie, I think, when filmmakers started really getting into making big blockbuster films. You know, they're blowing up... You know New York, and there's like all this really cool the scenery. White House. Yeah, you, that you never really had seen before, and it was mm-hmm. so engaging. You know, and just the intensity. The aliens came here to kill us. You know. That was their goal. No and... peace. You know, it's like <laughs> they, there's no peace in their mind. They wanted to here to kill us. And I know. You agree. Number four. Number four is Close Encounters of the Third oh, Kind. Oh, nice. That was actually. Ooh. I know. I loved the little song from that, and it was the first sci-fi the movie. Song. It's a little, little tiny song. tune, yeah. but. I loved how it was my first sci-fi film I ever saw. I loved the story. I loved how the father was just so focused on finding these aliens and getting to meet them and how they're, the aliens are so sweet too. Right. That whole chemistry together made me have an appreciation for sci-fi films altogether and realizing they're not all about blowing up the White House. Your number four? Uh, my number four is Planet of the Apes, the original, the 1968 yes. good. version. Not the one with Marky Mark. You know, but oh, the, uh, gosh. the the good one. Mm-hmm. But that's always been my favorite one. Just the storyline and just that ending with him walking up and seeing the Statue of Liberty buried in the sand. I know it's like, a great movie with an yeah. amazing twist. It was a movie that started having these amazing twists at the end. I think. Yeah, yeah, and just kind of set it up, and it was just freaky. You know, for that time, it was just made people really think about, you know, again time travel and you know how that all works and everything. Mm-hmm. So, all right, number three. Number three, Galaxy Quest. It's hilarious. It has good acting. I love how Sigourney Weaver's in it, and they right. got Alan Rickman to be in it. Those two members alone in that movie, I would just watch it just for them. Uh, I can see that. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, and it, you know, and very seldom do the sci-fi movies on anybody's list go the comedy route. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's kind of cool. I know. That. And random fact: Rain Wilson from The Office, Dwight, right? is in that movie. Is he really? Does he play one of the no-name guys? One of the really? aliens. Yep. Interesting. He has a few lines in it. Huh. So go back and watch it. He's I'm in have there. I'm going to do that now. Uh, well, my number three is uh, one of my favorite movies still that I go back and watch at least once a month. I'll pop it in oh, really? and watch it, and it's Jurassic Park. Oh, it still yeah. looks good and sounds good, you know, with the whole cup setting on the, on the dash when the dinosaur's Ooh. coming. Number two? Number two is Minority Report. Ah, a little Tom Cruise action. I know. It's one of the few Tom Cruise movies I actually like. Right. I thought it was a great story, despite it being long. Mm-hmm. I like how there's so many twists in it, how the whole feeling of it was dark and very, the future's very bleak, apparently. Right. And right. I just love the way that the director had it go and how you felt like you were on this journey with Tom Cruise mm-hmm. and that you were on the run as well. Would you take a job of just laying in the water predicting crimes if they paid well? If it paid ridiculously well, but I don't know if I want to be <laughs> scarred for life like that, seeing all these like bad right. things happen. You know, sometimes you're going to make the big bucks you got to sacrifice, I guess. It's true. Yeah. All right. Hope yours is happier. What's your number two? My number two, which almost made my number one, is Serenity. Uh, probably one of the best. Have you seen it? Yes, Please I have. You've seen it. Yeah. Y- yes, I have. Don't yeah. worry. Based on the Firefly series, probably one of the most brilliantly written, witty, funny, 
just all around with, with action and humor and characters and everything about that movie. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. Interested to see what your number one is. All right, ready? Ready for this? Yes. My number one is Blade Runner. Really? Look yes. at you, girl. I love Blade Runner. The director's cut. That <laughs> Very important. Not, no, not the actual one. The director's cut's better. I just love Harrison Ford in this film. Mm -hmm. The way that the setting is all future Chinatown. Everyone right. can apparently know Chinese. And yeah. the twists in it are so amazing that you just didn't see it coming at all. I never saw any of the twists coming. Right. And I loved it. And to this day, when I watch it, I can still find things I didn't notice before. And it's a great movie that you can go back and watch a million times. The soundtrack for it's brilliant. Right. The scores were great. Maybe I need to go back and rewatch it. If I'd known that was on your list, I would have worn my little wrap dress with my little white. Oh, really? Just one piece thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got some toilet paper wrapped it around. That'd know? been some pretty interesting video yeah. right there. I wouldn't subject and you to do that. You're number one. What would you guess? What would you guess? What even genre? What? What? decade do you think my number one will be from? If you even had to speculate what my number one sci-fi film would be. Is it Alien? No. It's the greatest, greatest oh. sci-fi movie ever made. E.T.? <laughs> oh, Star Wars. <laughs> I need to phone home and tell your parents what's going on, E.T. Yes, it's Star Wars. Okay, Star yeah, Wars. Star which Wars one? Episode 5. Which, of course, even though it's the the fifth episode, it's still the second one that was released in theaters, and that's Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. Which is, to me, even though the th episode four is greatness, I mean, it, it, four, five, and six are all great. Six you can't count because of the Ewoks. you got to just totally get rid of that. Really? The Ewoks are so cute, they, though. They, they ruin that movie. <laughs> it's a great one. I'll agree. But the whole no good things happen to the protagonist, it feels for me. Like, no one wins. It's almost like the second Lord of the Rings. How right. it's just all transition things where right. nothing amazing, hurrah, we won kind of moments. Interesting. Yeah. So there you go. We're going to take another small break. When we come back, we're going to do a quick rundown of the movie The Goods and uh, kind of give our respect on that as it came out this weekend and finish up right here on The Mungle Show.